Okay, well, good morning, everybody. We're going to kick this thing off whether they're ready or not. So welcome to the uh, 2021 SRM virtual annual meeting. Um, as your 2020 SRM president, it's my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome you and to op officially open this meeting and uh, get things going. So it's uh, certainly been uh, a crazy year for us. Uh, we've all had to make a lot of different changes and things going on and, and work and, and home and family life and everything else. And my, my, first, um, my first wish with you is that all things are well with you and your family health-wise. Um, we've, lost, we've lost a lot of people to this, to this virus and, and hopefully um, it hasn't, hasn't touched you too hard, but uh, we certainly um, think about, about you and your families and, and hope everybody is, is safe and well, first and foremost. Um, I want you to know that there's been a lot of effort that's been put into this SRM virtual annual meeting. And um, it's something that, that we haven't done before. And, and it's something that we might be a little bit clunky at to begin with, but we're gonna do our best we're going to make the best of it, and we think we've got a really good um, setup for you, a really good annual meeting that, that can, as much as possible, um, not only promote science inter interchange and exchange, but also um, be able to, to connect with people, either individually or as a group, uh, make those connections and, 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 and be able to do the, some of the things that we that we like to do when we get together as, as, as at the SRM annual meetings. As of today, we are still planning on this being uh, um, just for this year. We, we do plan on having our 2022 annual meeting in Albuquerque, and hopefully all that goes, goes as planned. But I know, again, being that this is kind of something new, um, I, I've asked uh, our Karen Lanch, Launchbox and, and Kelly Fogarty this morning to kind of hear in just a little bit to, to kind of give everybody an overview of the system, the platform, kind of how it works, how to navigate it, and maybe how to get the most out of um, this, this meeting, if you will, as being a virtual meeting. So, so we'll have that for you here in just a little bit. And with that, I want to, I want to say a special thank you to Karen and, and, and to Kelly because um, there's been a big group of people that have worked on this annual meeting, um, and, but they're the two that's kind of spearheaded this thing along, and we owe them a, a great debt of debt, gratitude. Um, they just kind of picked this up at, at the last minute, if you will, when we decided a couple of months after Denver that we were going to have to do it this way. So they stepped up to the plate. Uh, All righty, and given the way it's going to be with these technical meetings, technical difficulties, looks like our president, Charlie Hart, has froze up a little bit. With that, uh, I am your executive vice president, Jess Peterson, and I want to build off of what President Hart just referenced in a big, warm welcome to have all of you here today at our 74th SRM annual meeting. Now, as President Hart referenced, for those of you that are used to attending it in person, we thank you very much for being able to work out the live stream and technical difficulties and everything that goes on there. So again, we really, really appreciate you making this work. As President Hart referenced, we hope to be in Albuquerque and next year, along with Boise in 2023. So thanks for bearing with us this year. Uh, one of the things that we're really excited about is maybe you haven't had an opportunity to, uh, this might be one of your first meetings. This might be a meeting you, you haven't been to in a while. And so we were really glad that you're able to join us whether you're used to going in person or this is one of your first uh, live meetings or online meetings that you've been able to access now because you haven't had a scheduling conflict. So we're really, really glad to have you here. And we're really excited about this function. As President Hart mentioned, we spent a lot of time, your staff, volunteers, the planning committee and board have spent a lot of time getting this, uh, getting this meeting to this point. 
And you're going to see a lot of the neat things that we enjoy so much about our SRM and meetings. So uh, take it in. Uh, we've got a help desk. You've got staff. They're literally virtually running around right now, uh, working behind the scenes and helping you out and ready to, to be there as you go through this week ahead. So with that, uh, before I get, you know, before we jump into everything here too, I, I know you're always going to have, we're always going to have difficulties when you go online and, uh, and there's always going to be technical difficulties. When you work through that, uh, we'll, we're glad you're working through that. Uh, but do take a moment or two and, and when things go well, uh, kick these planning committee members a note. They've been working around the clock uh, and let them know, thank you for, for spending the extra time. Most of them are volunteers here and if staff, they are going above and beyond on their hourly. So uh, again, we, we appreciate you so much for being here and we're looking forward to an ex outstanding SRM annual meeting. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our planning committee and they'll walk you through how to make the most out of your week here ahead. Again, on behalf of the board and staff and everyone involved with the Society for Ancient Management, thank you, welcome. And with that, your 2021 planning committee. Thank you, Jess. And I'll go ahead and jump in here. Uh, this is Kelly Fogarty, SRM Senior Director of Operations. And for those that know me or might not know me, one of the large uh, responsibilities on my desk falls under the annual meeting category. And so this year I've had really the pleasure of working with our 2021 planning committee that was really put together here in the last year. A great group of individuals who volunteered, put their hand up, said, yes, take me into this virtual and digital world. Let's all learn this together and let's see what we can do. And so I really hope everyone is excited for what is truly a great week of events ahead. Uh, hopefully everyone has had a chance to look through the meeting platform on Cadence and to kind of start developing what is to be your own schedule for the next couple of days. Um, I'll be switching it over here to Karen and Lysandra who are gonna be giving a tutorial in a few minutes. Uh, but I did just wanna first thank uh, our presenting sponsors for this year's 2021 annual meeting, uh, both Corteva and NRCS have once again stepped up and shown their support for the society. Uh, they are repeat and, and, and once again uh, coming in at that high level of presenting sponsors and really this year's meeting would not be possible without them. So we really wanna thank, the, thank them again for taking part and really supporting their society this year. Uh, in addition to that, uh, during the upcoming tutorial here in a few minutes, you'll be shown how to really navigate this new meeting platform. And also one of the things you'll be shown is how to visit our exhibitors. Uh, we all know that we love the SRM uh, 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 visitor, uh, exhibitor, excuse me, exhibitor and, and trade show when we're in an in-person meeting and we wanted to make sure that we could bring everything that we could as a part of that to this virtual setting. So don't worry, the, the vendors are still there, they're waiting for you and there's some really, really exciting and unique ways that you'll be able to connect with them uh, this week. Uh, you'll note that this is a bit of a change um, in the schedule from our normal in-person meetings and that we would normally be starting out each day with a plenary session. But this year, we're gonna be starting each day with what we've called our SRM-centric events. So today here, with the welcome session, and then following up tomorrow with our honor awards, Wednesday with our business meeting. And then of course, don't forget later in the day on Wednesday, we'll be having our student awards as well. And then you'll find those plenary sessions, which is a great lineup that our plenary group has put together each day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from one to 2.30 Mountain. So you'll be finding that in your schedule and make sure that you plan accordingly. Um, and with that, I just wanted to kind of give that brief overview and welcome from our end. And I'll be turning it over now to Karen and Lysandra, who will be going through the annual meeting platform and going through some helpful tools and tricks and tips to get you through the meeting. And as of course, what Jess alluded to previously, if you ever have questions as you navigate the meeting, you can always go to the help desk or email me and we'll get you through and help you through the process. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Karen. 
All right. Thank you so much, Kelly. It's been a long journey and I'm really happy today is here because we're getting to show you what we've been working on. So I just want to go back a little bit, just um, mention that, uh, you know, we were supposed to go to Boise this year and we of course didn't. And, and we sat one day with the, the Boise team and this new virtual team and we said, God, what are we going to call this? And Brian Thrift said, let's call it New Frontiers. And you know, that name stuck because we are, we are absolutely in a new frontier. Um, it's snowing out today here in Moscow. I mean, I'm so happy I didn't have to drive uh, the 100 miles to Spokane in a foot of snow and I, I'm alive and well because I didn't have to get out on the road. And think of all the time it saved. You know, I'm kind of frustrated with all the time that we've saved this year by being in Zoom and yet what did we do with it? We just stuck another little piece of something in there. We never just took the 20 minutes it would have taken us to walk over there. We, we just stuck one more thing in there. So I'm gonna ask you to rethink that. Uh, life isn't going to slow down unless you slow it down. I think you heard me at the plenary session last year. I gave that advice. And so this is time to really enjoy this meeting. I, I, I'm excited. I, I, you're going to, Lysandra is going to show you how to connect with people in the meeting. I hope anyone that knows me connects with me. I'd like to see what you're up to. So you're going to save time by not having to pack that bag, get on the plane, take the car. So sit back and relax with that time. Take time to ponder. When was the last time you just sat around and you pondered? So, so get some information from this meeting and ponder, sharpen the saw, and then also engage. Sure, this is going to be recorded and you can go back later and look at it. And you know you won't, but you can. It's there for you. For years, you'll be able to go back. But instead, take this time to engage with your colleagues. Reach out, connect, get in those workshops and those symposia where they are live and really engage. So I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to just show you what the flow will look like, and then Lysandra is going to uh, take you home on that. Okay, so uh, it's pretty simple schedule. Uh, sorry, there we go. Uh, each day, as, uh, as Kelly said, we're going to start with this SRM-focused session. Uh, one of the challenges we had in this meeting is that we're spanning uh, quite a few time zones. So this was a time where, although our friends in Hawaii do have to get up at 6 a.m. to sit to do these, it's, and it's 11 o'clock in the east, it's, that's where we're gonna start our day. After that, um, you get some time to go and just peruse the posters and presentations. Lysander will show you where those are on the schedule. And uh, those are, take them, that you can pull them right off the shelf and listen to a video presentation, or you can listen to, a, or you can read a poster. And also some very creative ways people are showing off. They're showing stuff with drone footage. They, uh, some of the posters are in a, um, a story map. So look around. Also, every day we're highlighting some sessions that you can do live Q&A. So again, engage. Get in that Q&A session and ask that author what they really meant or what they found or what they think. Uh, right before we kind of go into midday, as you start thinking about lunch or maybe a little after lunch, there's the Global Rangelands Tour. Um, we, our partners from the International Affairs Committee have brought people from across the globe that are going to call in and tell you about rangelands from different continents across the globe. And then those great plenary sessions that Jess mentioned, uh, boy, that team has put together three incredible plenary sessions. So take time, again, take time and sit back and think. It, it, it just gets some time to really cre be creative and, and think about what this means. The theme is wicked problems. How do we address the wicked, wicked problems on range? Our afternoons or late afternoons are gonna be in symposia and, and workshops. Those are gonna be interactive. Chance for you to get in there, ask questions, hear speakers live. And then in the evenings and afternoons, there's still going to be social events. So that's kind of the, the flow of it. And don't forget that there's an exhibit hall. There's a job fair. Uh, there's fun stuff to do, like go take the crossword puzzle. <laughs> and, um, and then also there's the help desk, which, which was mentioned because if you, if you feel like you just couldn't fit, find something, join the help desk. So I will put a note to all of the planning team up there, but my heart goes out to Amanda Miller and Lysandra Pyle, who in the last five or six weeks, they, they searched inside this platform and they found a way to make this meeting work. And so among all the people that were great on the plan, uh, planning team, I think Kelly and I would take our hats off to Amanda and Lysandra. <laughs> so with that, Lysandra, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I am going to give it to you and, and show us around this platform that, like I said, you, you know the un, under, what's under the hood of this thing. So go ahead and tell us. Thanks for the introduction, Karen. I'm gonna introduce everyone to the website. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to log in and take a look around initially. I can see lots of people have already registered for events already. So when you come to the website, you will end up here on the homepage. And we've got a lot of key information for you here right at the front. We have our welcome and we have some resources here put together by us. 
Um, some key information we have for you right off the top is to set up your profile and you'll set up your profile by clicking on the top left here on your name and just fill out this information here. Um, we have a program overview for each day that kind of tells you what's going on. It's in Mountain Standard Time um, throughout the day. So after this, um, we'll all have to tune in to the technical sessions and look at posters and presentations to prepare for the Q&A. So that's the next step after this event. Um, what everyone should do while they're exploring the platform is go over and start filling out their schedule. So here under schedule, we can go to full schedule, which shows you all of the events we have scheduled um, that are live, or you can search by these um, highlighted tracks. Um, we also have a track for the Q&A in here as well. If you were looking where to find that. These are all the Q&A. Um, some other parts to look at would be, um, this is where our posters and presentations are for the technical sessions you'll be attending right after this. We have our exhibit hall with all of our exhibitors. Um, one of the things we wanna point out to you is that you can interact with exhibitors by scrolling down their page and going down to their chat, click join chat, and you can um, start a conversation with them and they'll all be live at their booth starting at 11 Mountain Time today. And you can jump in a Zoom call with them and they'll be there waiting to talk to you. Um, some other things I should show you how to do are to um, maybe break the ice with people. So I can reach out to the SRM president and I can break the ice with him. And from there, we can start a conversation directly with each other. If people wanted to set up a chat channel to like have their workspace present, um, we could, any person can set up their own private message channel for like their works, their workspace, like their work team or their lab group. And we've also set up a bunch of um, chat channels here already for the technical sessions. So let's say you wanted to go to climate variation and drought. We have lots of links to get you to the Q and A but you can also talk to the authors here. We have this set up for that. The last piece of information I need to show you is the help desk. So we have links to the help desk all over the site. This is like an exhibit booth where you can scroll down. You can talk to us directly by joining our chat. We also have some tips here for how to interact with the meeting. And we also have another booth if you experience any um, misconduct during the meeting where you can maybe report that here. Um, Karen, is there anything else you'd like me to cover? No, Lysander, it's great. I think um, it looks a little like uh, maybe confusing, but hey, dig in, it's not that hard. Just push on buttons, you can't really do any harm. And make sure to put your um, information in your uh, um, in your profile so that we can connect with you. Again, go to the help desk if you have any questions. Kelly and others are gonna help you out with that. So I'm gonna return, I guess, to uh, Kelly and, and thank you guys for being here. Um, again, I hope I bump into you in the meeting. So chat me up and, and we'll have a good time. Thank you, Karen and Lysandra. Hopefully that gave folks a, a good idea of, some, of ways to navigate the meeting, but also how to make the most out of the meeting. Um, and we'll just keep reiterating that always use the help desk. Our contact information, my contact information will be there so you can send me a quick note and we'll help you troubleshoot any way that we can to make sure that you're getting the most out of this meeting platform. Uh, so I will go ahead and turn it over to our EVP, Jess Peterson, who is going to introduce uh, one more welcome for uh, this year's meeting. Well, thank you so much. And again, are, are we getting enthused and excited out there? We see the chat box is going well. So folks have picked up on that outstanding uh, emails, text, uh, and that, of course this chat lines are coming in. So thank you so much uh, for engaging and your enthusiasm already, we can feel it. And uh, as you've just heard from our planning committee, uh, what an opportunity, we're so excited. We're gonna keep this show going. We have an opportunity from time to time in plenary sessions to take advantage and enjoy uh, the folks that have uh, been longstanding SRM members, 
but have also continued to climb within the ranks of their professional career. And this individual here has been a longstanding SRM member and has climbed to one of the highest levels that a society member can do or has done. And this individual is now currently the acting undersecretary. I'm gonna walk through this bio a little bit so I don't mess it up. He's the acting undersecretary uh, for farm production and conservation. This is the mission area for both uh, FSA, Farm Service Agency, Natural Resource Conservation Service and Risk Management Agency. All of them are under this new division now known as FPAC. Kevin Norton is the acting undersecretary uh, for this region, deputy undersecretary. Uh, he has met with us multiple times on an SRM fly-in. Some of you have seen him at section meetings and the like in annual meetings. Uh, he's been a great asset to us when we go to Washington, D.C., and will continue to be in his role right now. Now, there is only a few reasons why you wouldn't be able to attend in person. He has a very good reason. Uh, we want to give him and his family all of our best as they're enjoying a wonderful wedding of Kevin uh, and his wife's daughter here today. So without further ado, our longstanding Society for Inch Management member and your and current acting deputy undersecretary for the U.S. Department of Agriculture's FBAC, Kevin Norton. Hello, SRM family. It's my honor to address this wonderful society to which I've enjoyed over 42 years of membership and participation. I must confess it's a little confusing as to my titles at this time. When I, the initial invitation was presented, I was the acting chief of the Natural Resources Conservation Service, a temporary appointment for my permanent job as the associate chief. While speaking to you today, I'm the Acting Deputy Undersecretary for USDA's Farm Production and Conservation Mission Area. While President Biden assembles his leadership team and they're onboarded at USDA, I'm filling in a critical spot within the department. I'm so looking forward to returning home to NRCS and to work on the private lands conservation efforts within the next few weeks. It is impressive how you've adapted your annual meeting to the current pandemic normal and continue the mission of expanding the science and the art of understanding our st and stewardship of our rangeland resources. While our collective preference would have been to meet in person, I truly look forward to this virtual opportunity. Range conservation is a part of my DNA. From my high school days of range and pasture judging and raising livestock, to my range degree at Oklahoma State, to the foundation of my NRCS career as a range conservationist. A position title I held for 12 of my 39 years of service and I truly hold in my heart for the balance of my years with this agency. And I want to just say go Pokes right here to all the uh, fellow alumni of Oklahoma State University uh, and to the Society for Range Management. It's a professional organization that has been a decades long partnership with the Soil Conservation Service first and now the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Y'all are near and dear to my heart. NRCS could not accomplish the conservation successes we have had and will continue to experience across the nation's rangelands without partners like you, leaning into the science and sociology surrounding this wonderful resource and the numerous benefits we accrue from our shared stewardship on both the private and public rangelands of this great nation. As we strive to hire and equip our workforce to work across institutions, agencies, and in hand with the producers and stewards on the land, the SRM is critical, if not essential, to growing and training our workforce to be effective and articulate in the conservation planning setting everywhere, every time. For that, I thank you. You are special and tremendously necessary to our agency and our work. Let's look now at some of the successes and the impacts across working lands whose roots can be traced back to our employees and our partners and what we've learned from associations and societies like the Society for Range Management. Let me start with our personnel. We are currently 279 strong in the Rangeland Specialist 454 series, with many other range specialists scattered through other job series. Certainly, that's not enough. Much to the chagrin of my agronomist, soil scientist, and generalist colleagues, I'm quite often remind them that a well-trained range specialist is versatile in almost every planting setting, from the grasslands to agronomic soil health and wildlife habitat. 
However, I will confess that our right specials are not always happy when we land them in a location that's predominantly farming. So what are we doing now? I'm happy to share with you that NRCS is currently using direct hire authority to fill over 1,500 positions. We've tagged 75 of those to be rangeland specialists, but that isn't limited to just those 75. We can pick up uh, individuals that are uh, educationally qualified as range specialists in our soil conservationist and our other positions. So we're not going to just get 75. I know that's not a lot. In fact, it's a little bit disappointing for a range conservationist like me, uh, but I, we're going to continue to work and uh, we're going to continue to recruit specific disciplines and educational backgrounds. These positions are currently being advertised across the United States and direct hire authority is really unique because it allows us to seek out entry level conservationists at the GS5 through 9 level and make them direct offers for employment. If y'all know anyone interested uh, that is a graduate and would like to come to work for the Natural Resources Conservation Service, just have them reach out directly to many of the NRCS people that are here at this meeting, uh, but also to their state conservationists in whatever state that they would like to work. These new hires, when we get them on board, they're going to need mentoring, training, and a professional organization like SRM is going to be necessary to continue to build the robust, sustainable working lands workforce that is out on the land assisting farmers, ranchers, and forest landowners. That's where you come in. I've encouraged all of our agency leaders to allocate resources for the state and national technical specialists to attend, and most importantly, participate in professional society meetings. We need to be here, we need to be learning, we need to be a part of the dialogue, and most importantly, we need to build the relationships across the breadth of this society's membership. We encourage a professional membership in the society for all of our employees. Uh, I got to confess, that's a tougher nut to crack with our workforce today than it was back in 1981. I don't have an easy answer, but we're committed to continuing the discussion. We want our employees to be connected with the Society for Range Management and other professional societies so that they can sharpen their skills and continue to adapt to this changing technology and science surrounding our natural resources. NRCS and SRM have a partnership agreement. We're looking forward to working together into the future, developing two training courses covering vegetation monitoring and data interpretation and a grazing land economics class. Additionally, we have an agreement focused on comprehensive and long-term strategies for sustainable rangelands on tribal lands. What about expanding our base of support? Technical service providers, or TSPs as we call them, are also important to our success. Your certification program for certified professionals in rangeland management is an exemplary process with credible, rigorous qualifications and standards. TSPs provide support to our agency's customers out in the field to help address workload or training needs when we cannot allocate the time or in-depth resources to a specific customer. We view TSPs as a valued partner. They can plan, design, and help producers implement conservation at the system level by incorporating the landscape, watershed, or habitat values into the planning environment. We are currently engaged in a continuous improvement process. Additionally, TSPs can be drivers of innovation since they have flexibility to nurture innovative ideas allow them to cultivate and evolve faster, and in turn, allowing the agency and the producers to benefit. We embrace continued learning and innovation, and we believe the technical service providers, the certified rangeland management specialists, provide a great opportunity for us to grow forward. NRCS has been working over the past year to pursue a continuous process improvement effort to help address congressional requests, the requests from our TSPs, our clients, and the field offices that you provide support to. Uh, there are nine CPI teams working through the number of issues such as training, certification, third-party certification like this Society for Range Management, planning implementation requirements, and quality assurance. We anticipate CPI process to be completed by early summer in preparation for full deployment in fiscal year 2022. I just want to emphasize we are keenly aware 
that we have a very cumbersome and difficult process and it doesn't really fit well with the way you engage with producers on the landscape, whether it's in the early part of our conservation planning effort, whether you're where you're gathering resource information, analyzing data, or you're in the stage of evaluating the options move forward or implementation. We believe that the process should be adaptable so that you can inform and work with the producer at the right place at the right time to provide the services they need. We're on that mission and we're going to get it right. So that's my commitment to you around technical service providers. I just want to emphasize right here that the conservation planning process is, is nine steps that are guiding decision making. Uh, technical service providers provide value in every one of those three key phases of our conservation planning process. We're going to break that process down so producers, customers can engage the technical service provider at the appropriate time to feel the need to do what's best in that planning setting that is their farm, their ranch, or their grazable woodlands, their forest. So now let's take a virtual journey across the nation's vast working lands, our rangelands. What an impressive picture of the scope of the lands and the impacts of your work. 30% of the entire land cover of the United States is rangeland, which equates to about 770 million acres. You know these numbers. It's an estimated two-thirds of all the U.S. rangelands are privately owned, and that makes up about 500 million acres. What's unique is in a lot of places, the private lands and the public lands are blended together, and you have to balance those competing or complementary interests in order to be successful in grazing land natural resource planning. These working lands constitute over 27% of the total acreage across the 48 contiguous states. That is vast and impressive. So where did we fit in this day and time in history? To start, NRCS has committed $4 billion in investments across America to address conservation needs across all land uses. These investments include our technical assistance to our customers and partners, funding opportunities through the Farm Bill programs, and the use of partnership agreements with non-governmental organizations, uh, uh, the private sector, and others to expand uh, the reach of conservation and the federal investment. We have COVID-19 that certainly has presented its challenges in delivering conservation and the quality of customer service that we expect across the states in 2020. I can assure you and I am uh, happy to report that our employees and partners met that challenge. They found a way through the challenges of delivering customer service from across the truck beds through uh, Microsoft team meetings, uh, Zoom meetings, signing stations outside our service center, uh, scheduling appointments where they could uh, uh, you know, visit the farm, visit the ranch, and still gather that resource-based uh, data so that we could work through decisions with our customers. And offering uh, many opportunities uh, to communicate. We've extended our, our uh, offices and our work into our employees' homes so that we're available and continuing to work with the customers across the landscape. And thanks to each of you, tremendous impacts have been made. Working one-on-one -on -one with your customers every day, you are not only implementing beneficial conservation practices such as brush management, prescribed fire, water source pipelines, fencing, uh, you're also educating customers on those sound principles of rangeland stewardship. You're educating them on soil health, understanding the plant species, the management, the impact of grazing, and the different grazing management opportunities on the ecosystems and the multiple resource benefits that they want to derive from their grazing lands. I mentioned the value of our partnerships earlier. In 2020, working through partnerships with the Society for Range Management, the American Forage and Grasslands Council, and the National Grazing Lands Coalition, and others, uh, more than 26 million acres of grazing lands were positively impacted through sound grazing practices and principles. Uh, these initiatives, such as the Sage Grouse Initiative, Lesser Prairie Chicken Initiative, and the Southwest Willow Flycatcher Initiative, we all work together as a community to protect and restore and enhance the habitat that these species require. So we have individual landowners, communities, and partners all focused on working lands and securing the future of our nation's lands. You're a big part of that picture. 
with viability, healthy and productive lands that provide economic sustainability to producers, to rural communities, along with the necessary food fiber to feed this nation. To help you accomplish and enhance your conservation efforts, I also want to remind you of additional resources that are, your, that are at your fingertips. A few of these are the 25 NRCS plant material centers which use innovative technologies to support and evaluate native plant species that fit a region-specific rangelands and grasslands. If you have not engaged the Plant Materials Center and their staff, I encourage you to do so. Ecological Site Descriptions, or ESDs, are another valuable source of information that I hope are working for you. Uh, these descriptions provide NRCS with the greatest opportunity for sustainably advancing applied conservation science. They are the cornerstone for conservation planning, monitoring, evaluating, and adapting management for all land types and uses. And finally, the Natural Resource Inventory, or NRI, which provides science-based information on land use and natural resource conditions. It's my understanding that this year's meeting offers a session on both ecological site descriptions and the National Resources Inventory. If your schedule allows, you should join these meetings. Now let's take a look forward, as I shared earlier, data on that large swath of grazing lands across the United States. We still have a big job ahead of us in making sure these working lands remain viable, productive, and sustainable. And by sustainable, I mean environmentally, socially, and economically. Without that engagement of the, uh, of the person on the land and our work with them, and the viability of their operation, we will not be successful in moving the needle on improvement of our grazing lands resources and meeting the many competing demands for wildlife habitat, watersheds, all of those things that come along with our wonderful grazing resource. As with everything, our work comes with uncertainties. Is Mother Nature gonna deal us an environmental blow? Where does climate change fit into the work each of you are doing? and expected to accomplish. What will carbon sequestration efforts look like down the road? What impact will future urban development and growth have on our working lands? I don't have all the answers, but I can assure you that working together and leaning into our passion and commitment to conservation and our commitment to valued partnerships, America's working lands will be sustainable, prosperous, and viable for generations to come. Again, I thank you for asking me to take part in this Society for Range Management annual meeting. I wish you an excellent meeting. Please stay safe, and until I see you again, take care. All right. Hopefully everyone enjoyed that video. What a great message uh, from Acting Undersecretary uh, Kevin Norton there. And just as a reminder, we'll be recording all of the sessions. Um, and so if you did miss anything, you had to step away, you'll always be able to come back and the recorded sessions will be populated within the agenda. So on that note, we are going to wrap up this morning session just a bit early so that we can give folks sufficient time to navigate and learn the system, hopefully put into practice all of the tips and tricks that you learned from Lysandra and Karen uh, earlier in this morning's session so that you are ready and raring to go for the technical session starting at 1030 Mountain. Um, again, as a reminder, we're going to be recording all the sessions and populating them within the schedule. So check back if you have to step away for a call, you've got to get to some work. We understand. That's why that's one of the main benefits here of this virtual platform for sure, is that you are going to have access to those sessions that maybe you had to miss. Um, and on that note, the platform will be available following the meeting's conclusion at the end of the week. So you'll be able to tune in and maybe you wanna check out a certain talk again, something really resonated with you and you wanna make sure that you kind of gather that information. So always, be sure to check back. We'll try to have all of those recorded sessions available uh, by the end of every day. Uh, technical, you know, difficulties there with standing. Uh, on another note, we of course wanted to provide an update on registration. We had really hoped that SRM members would turn out this year. And all we can say is that you all delivered. 
We have just over 1,500 attendees joining us this year. What a great turnout. Like second VP of Launchbell said, connect with one another. You've got 1,500 people on this platform to reach out to, connect on a project, ask questions. Maybe you saw them present in one of the technical sessions. Use this virtual meeting as you would the hallways at an in-person meeting. Reach out, make those connections. So now as we close out this session and go into a week of symposia and talks honoring our world's rangelands, I'd like to give the following statement on behalf of SRM. The Society for Range Management acknowledges with respect that rangelands are the traditional and ancestral homelands of indigenous peoples, as well as a site of trade, gathering, and healing. As these words are spoken and heard, we recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards and acknowledge their presence continues to enrich our vibrant rangeland community. Thank you for everyone tuning in this morning. We look forward to seeing you all this week in this truly new frontier. So with that, we will close today's uh, welcome and opening session. Uh, hopefully everyone has a chance to go ahead and check out all that's offered on the meeting platform. And again, any questions at all, reach out and we'll be here. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you at the technical talks starting at 1030 Mountain.